Hello and welcome to episode six of the Wholehearted um, Wholehearted Healing with Joe podcast. <laughs> Not sure why I paused there, but um, we are going to get into basically what is SI joint, SI joint pain and like like where is it coming from? Why do you have it? Why are you struggling to get rid of it? Probably as well. So this episode was actually suggested by someone on my YouTube channel a little while ago, kind of when I first announced on there that I was going to be doing some health stuff. Um, and I felt like this is an interesting topic. It is, I mean, I do see people with, um, that come in with SI joint pain quite frequently. Um, and for those of you who maybe don't know what it is, it is in your like lower back. Um, and so this is kind of an interesting topic because I feel like I have a different approach to it, a different look at it. Um, and yeah, I'm going to kind of talk you through that and kind of guide you through that. So we're going to talk about kind of what is SI joint pain, where is it, you know, what types of movements usually kind of like irritate it, um, and then why I feel you're either experiencing it or you can't maybe even get rid of it. Um, And then just, yeah, generally maybe kind of give some insight as to things to kind of look at or um, ways that you can kind of approach it um, yourself. So some housekeeping things kind of before we get started. Again, you can follow me on Instagram for more content if you're not already. Um, I post different content there as well as updates. Um, So if you're interested in kind of following me, kind of getting a behind the scenes of just kind of what's going on, the link for that is is down below. And then as well, my 12-week coaching program, The Mindful Woman, is live and does have some spots open for it. Um, So this program's for you if you've been struggling to heal your physical body and you just haven't really had the results that you're looking for. So you might feel lost and not sure where to go or what to do, maybe feeling very overwhelmed with um, how to navigate and move forward with your health because there's just so much information out there. And so in this program, we discuss taking a holistic approach to the mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual self in order to heal. Um, But we actually have an an initial one-on-one assessment together in the very beginning where we pinpoint where what's kind of going on and where you should focus. And then you have both one-on-one and group um, support as well as a curriculum to help keep you on track during those 12 weeks and to make any changes um, that may be needed that come up for you with your health. So the application link for that is below as well. You can also reach out to me on Instagram as well um, if you're not sure how to find it or if you have any questions about it. So let's get into today's topic. So we're gonna talk about SI joint pain um, and We're gonna start with like kind of what it is and where you would typically feel it. So some of you might know exactly what it is, (laughs) others of you might not, Um, but basically SI joint stands for sacroiliac joint. So it's where the sacrum meets the iliac bones. So if you ever look at like a a skeleton, you've got your big kind of hip pelvis bones on the side. Um, And if you look at the back side of it, there's this little triangle in the middle. So where those bones meet the triangle is your SI joint. And if you're a visual person, I apologize, (laughs) but you could look it up on Google. Um, And so that's kind of where that joint is. So typically people usually feel low back pain. It's usually off to kind of one side. So it's not dead center in the middle, but it's, it's off to the one side, right at that little joint there. Sometimes people feel it on both sides, but idea, like usually it's kind of like on one or one's worse than the other. Um, at times people feel it into like their glute muscle or their buttocks area. Um, and sometimes people have like a sensation of it going down the leg. Um, so usually though, I would say that that's probably a little bit more of a nervy thing going on there, more of like a, um, more of a sciatic nerve situation kind of going on. So that's kind of the basics of it. Usually when it hurts people, it irritates them when they're sitting or standing for long periods of time. Um, And then like lifting or moving one leg. So usually if you're like lifting or moving that leg, um, for example, like doing stairs or climbing, walking, um, maybe if you're in the gym doing certain exercises that way, you'll notice it more frequently on that as well. So yeah, that's kind of like the basic of the SI joint. Now it's interesting because when I when I work with clients, especially um, in my my hands-on practice, my osteopathic practice, um, this is a common one that people experience and feel. Um, and some people have had it like forever, like they just can't ever seem to like get rid of it or they get treatment and it temporarily kind of gets relieved and then it kind of comes back, right? Um, and so, especially if 
um, that's happening where you're experiencing it for long periods of time and you know the traditional routes of like maybe physio and chiro and massage like aren't really cutting it they're just not really getting you the results like it's not going away it's because there's something deeper going on <laughs> and this is kind of like my overall message all the time is like if it's not going away there's something else going on and it's being missed right um, in my practice personally I actually don't usually treat the SI joint on its own uh, meaning like if you're like oh I have SI joint pain I'm not actually gonna go to the SI joint and just like treat it like that's not really my approach to it I actually look at a lot of other things and I get a lot of changes in the SI joint without actually touching it um, I will assess it I use it as a, an assessment tool in a different way than most people would assess it um, I actually learned through one of my mentors um, Anna um, who is her company's called movement rev I learned a unique way to kind of test it and approach it um, to see what's influencing the SI joint. So what's interesting with the SI joint is that there is like fascial connections. There's a lot of a lot of things that cross the SI joint. There's a lot of things going on around the SI joint that can be influencing it. And that's why you can sometimes get your SI joint treated or the muscles around it treated, but it's not still going away. And so what I usually find is that there is either a neural component, so with the nervous system or the just the nerves, like the tension around the nerves. There can also be um, what's called visceral um, tension, which is around like your viscera and your organs. So kind of more throughout the abdominal space, um, as well as like the thoracic rib cage area. There can also be like I kind of mentioned before, like fascial um, tension throughout the body that again is pulling on these SI joint, SI joints. So you're feeling the SI joint as a symptom, but it might be because there's all this other tension in your body that that's just where the pain kind of ends up, right? Because it's a big movement point. It's supposed to be free and mobile. And when it's not, then you're going to get that discomfort. And then the other thing that I sometimes find is that it could be coming from the leg so if there's any tension throughout the leg again that just disrupts that movement and it's it kind of goes along with the fascial and the neural piece um, whether those things are again just like pulling on that area so when I look at a client I look at okay well what is what's going on here right so I, I do my little assessment I test out okay are the SI joints moving if not do they improve when someone breathes in and holds their breath if it improves then I'm going, okay, they've got like a, a nerve or a nervous system thing going on, or they've got a visceral thing going on. If it stays the same, it's usually coming from the legs. And that's kind of my basis of like where I kind of go from. What's interesting is I've done cranial work. So I've worked on people's cranium to help reduce tension throughout the spinal column. Um, it's a very gentle form of work for those of you who have never experienced it. And um, that a lot of times actually really frees up the um, SI joint and really frees up the legs as well, just like the pelvis as a whole, uh, as well as, again, different visceral or organs when I free up the tension. So I actually literally like work with people's abdomens and free up the tension through there. Um, it doesn't mean that anything's wrong with those areas. It's just they're, they're tight, right? There's tension in them. And when we sit all day and we we get tight in our hip flexors and we get tight in our abdomens, right? Because everything's just kind of crunched together. This can just create tension, right? Because I mean, as a society, we don't move around as often as we used to, right? Um, and so this is where when I see like, there's very few times that I have to treat someone's SI joint to get rid of their SI joint pain, right? And so looking for practitioners that kind of take an alternative approach um, and go, okay, well, we keep retreating this SI joint pain, right, through the SI joint and it's not really going away, it's not changing. There's, you need someone who's gonna be able to take a look at the picture from a more broad lens and maybe even a different lens to go at it from a different perspective. So usually the neural and the, the visceral stuff will like clean it up right away. Now, the other thing that I've found is that like if people are very tight through their diaphragm, um, the which is like the lower rib cage so kind of right at like the top of your abdomen right and then kind of that like lower part of the rib cage if people are tight in there that also will 
affect the pelvis and the tension that's um, that's kind of like built up through the pelvis, which affects SI joint movement. Um, and so when I've freed this area up through, you know, just expanding the breath and opening up the rib cage, doing some kind of more like fascial work, um, and as well as helping clients like open up rotation, right? And kind of as long as it's comfortable for them and they're and they're capable of doing that, that's the area of which we rotate our body from. So if we can't rotate, everything just gets like stiff as a board, right? Through, you know, our whole entire back. So making sure that you have mobility is um, is important for, for just increasing the ability for your SI joint to move. Oftentimes I don't really find it's like, sometimes it can be like it's too mobile, but it's usually like, cause the other side's stiff, right? So it's just like, you know, what came first, chicken or the egg? Like which one's really influencing the other? Um, but yeah, the, the kind of mid, mid thorax, uh, mid part of the spine and the body and just kind of that upper abdomen area can be, if it's tight, which on a lot of people it is because we sit so often, that is a very um, common, common area that I find as well that if it's tight on people, it can be causing kind of SI joint discomfort. Um, the other piece, again, like I talked about was the leg. So, and hopefully this is like, you might have to come back to this. I don't know if I'm speaking too <laughs> quickly through all this stuff. But it's really just to kind of give you a, a guide of like how I how I look at things and how I look at things a bit different and how I find results by looking at different areas even though you're having pain in you know a very specific spot. Um, so the leg is another is another area that can get tight or has neural tension through it. Um, a common one for the back of the, of the leg would be like the sciatic nerve. If there's just tension along that pathway, um, it can create tension throughout the leg, which just changes again, how the pelvis moves. Um, Cause the pelvis is kind of this like central point, right? And it's very important and it does a lot of, it allows us to move, right? We our, our pelvis needs to move so we can move, right? But if we have things again, pulling on it from above and below, then it's gonna change how that movement looks or just not even allow it to move the way it needs to, right? So another one I look up is the leg um, and also to the front of the hip and the hip flexor, right? It all kind of incorporates the leg um, and how, again, how it's moving and just how that tension, that tension and that balance of the tension is. So that's what I usually look at outside of, of the, um, outside of the, SI joint itself. I look at the leg, I look at the abdomen, I look at the neural, which is usually up at the um, up at the skull is usually kind of where I do a lot of that treatment. Um, and then as well, I'll look at any sort of like fascial tensions that could be just showing up in people's movements that, that pop up. Now for you as someone who might be dealing with SI joint pain, I did mention like, you know, obviously seeking out someone who takes a different approach rather than just getting the same treatments over and over and over again and hoping for a different result. Um, sometimes it take takes time, but honestly, like I've had a lot of clients where like it doesn't take that much time um, where I can at least get it to decrease quite a bit. And then it's like, even if it does come back, it's decreased um, and we continually kind of make progress with that over the next couple treatments. Um, but as a, if you are like, I don't have the ability to let's say go see somebody right now or you know, I'm like in Canada, we have benefits here. So it's like if I'm out of benefits or coverage or whatever, um, whatever your kind of reasoning is, or you just don't have the time. <laughs> um, one thing I would, I think is really important with the SI joint that you could kind of look at treating yourself or kind of uh, managing even yourself would be um, two things. So one is stretching. So again, just keeping that like mobility through the body. Um, this one is tough because it depends on how uh, debilitated, I'm gonna say, you are based on the pain that you have. So if you're really immobile and really not capable of moving well, then I would limit the stretching. And there'll be, the next one I'm gonna give you is, is probably more of like what could benefit you. Um, but I would, really focus on stretching and more so the mobility of your body. So not so much like how how 
much into the stretch can I get, but how can I get my body to move a little bit more? So, and again, this can be like little rotations. This can be like dynamic stretching where you're like moving and stretching all at the same time. Like yoga is a good example of that where depending on the style, you're kind of more in movement. And so you're gaining strength, stability, and mobility all kind of in one. So yoga, again, if you can do those like movements itself, yoga would be a really good um, exercise type to get into. And just make sure it's not too aggressive for you if it's it's like gentle enough that you can like work through it and just don't over extend and push yourself you don't want the pain to be too intense right it should be like very minimal <clears throat> just so you don't like irritate it further um, and then if you're incapable of doing any sort of like stretching or mobility movement um, because of its pain I would suggest breath work um, and I, I know that might sound silly. <laughs> You're like, how the heck does breath work, you know, influence my back? Um, but you would be surprised. And it kind of goes back to that. Um, actually, it really incorporates all of really what I've talked about, the neural, the visceral and the fascial. And so it affects your nervous system because it helps calm you. Um, so one, it can help decrease the tension that you're holding in your nervous system. As well, it also, because your nervous system, it helps to calm your nervous system, it can help decrease pain. Okay, so breath work can help you decrease pain in any sort of injury, right? Um, because it ha does have that calming effect or can have that calming effect. Um, it's also going to um, affect the fascial component because when you're breathing, you're kind of moving or you should be moving your rib cage as well as your abdomen, like everything should be moving, right? And now, obviously, depending on the styles you're using, there may be more or less of that at certain times. But getting that mobility, you'd be surprised how many people, like, you know, either can't breathe into their chest or can't breathe into their belly or can't do both, right? Um, we don't realize how shallow of breathers we typically are. And then we also don't realize how challenging it is for us to slow our breath down and do really big, nice, deep breaths, right? So breath work can be really beneficial fascially to just, like, when we're breathing, especially slow and deep, we're getting that stretch of those tissues right because those tissues have to be able to expand with the breath and then decrease with the breath and so it's a gentle way to get movement throughout the body and you get fluid movement with that as well with that breathing and then it also affects the viscera so every time you're every time you breathe in your diaphragm moves down and it kind of like squishes your abdomen, like your, your organs and stuff in your abdomen. And then when you breathe um, out, the diaphragm moves back up and it gives the organs more space. So there's kind of this like accordion squishing thing happening in the abdomen, which again, gives movement to those organs and the viscera. And you might even realize like, especially through belly breathing, like, ooh, there's like, when I breathe in deep through my belly, like it's easier on one side than it is the other, or I feel this tension on this one side right and so those will kind of give you clues as to where you're kind of just holding some tension and how that feels but again our viscera are um, if you're not aware are a lot of our our organs because they're digestive you know in nature that's obviously their main function they need the nervous system to be relaxed for them to be able to do their job properly so again that nervous system piece also plays into the state of which the organs are in tension or not tension right so we need to be more calm and relaxed so breath work is a really good way that you can um, start by just seeing how it feels for you obviously but if you aren't capable of doing the stretching and that sort of thing because of your movement being limited breath work is a great way to do that and again if you can move yoga is wonderful because it incorporates literally all the things i just talked about i love yoga from like a very well-rounded um perspective of just like what it gives the body um, it gives you a little bit of everything and then you can pick and choose your style as well which is awesome um, and then yeah that was pretty much I think what I had there was one more thing I wanted to talk about with it um, but it's kind of escaped me right now oh I was gonna say with the breath work um, if you're like well where do I start with breath work obviously you could you know Google search different styles but honestly, I would just like, if you're very new to breath work, I would just like lay on the floor on your back 
you know, you can bend your knees, you can straighten your knees. Bending your knees is nice because it just gives like, there's like less tension through the, the middle of your body. Um, so if you lay on your back with your knees bent, you can actually just even um, start by just taking nice, slow, deep breaths in through your nose and then nice, slow, deep breaths out through your mouth. And you can go like in for a count of four, hold, pause, right? And then out for a count of four. And you can just do that. And I would say try to focus your intention of where your breath is filling up through the um, through that upper abdomen and like lower rib area. If you think of like those ribs in that area trying to expand laterally, so out to the side. So when you breathe in, you're really trying to expand the lower part of your rib cage out. That's gonna help you kind of breathe through your diaphragm area more. If you're having a hard time with like either breathing into your belly or breathing into that area or even a certain part of your rib cage, you can actually place a hand on that area to help give your brain a little bit more awareness of where you're trying to get the breath to go into. It's a little kind of trick. Um, you can even apply a little pressure with the hand so it kind of gives that cue to your brain and your body that this is you know where we're kind of working. Um, but I would start simple, right? Slow inhales, slow exhales, making sure you're breathing in through your nose and you know you can go out through your nose or out through your mouth, um, but definitely in through your nose. That's kind of where I'd start. Start with how that feels, do it a couple times, you know, see again, just like what you feel in it. Um, you can find, again, there's a ton of like breath work and things like all on the internet and like so many different ways you can do it. Like it's just, it's a, a vast sea of breathing techniques, but um, I think for pain wise, the slower the better, right? If we kind of slow things down, it'll help the the pain in the nervous system piece. So yeah, that is that is what I have with regards to the um, SI joint and what is really kind of causing it and what's kind of um, really leading to it, especially if you're, again, not being able to get rid of that pain and that discomfort. So um, definitely kind of try those things if you haven't already. If you have any other questions or comments or things, you can obviously, if you're on YouTube, you can drop those comments and things below. Um, you can reach out to me on Instagram, that sort of thing. Um, and if you have any other areas of the body that you want me to kind of talk about from a pain perspective and what I kind of see and what I see contributes to those things, especially like those pains that you just haven't been able to get rid of, you guys can let me know those as well, um, either on Instagram or down below um, if you're on YouTube. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I have. And so again, if you, this is something like, these are types of things that <clears throat> I will address and deal with with people in the program, the Mindful Woman program. Um, obviously some people are dealing with like some deeper rooted things of, you know, different you know, illnesses and like I, you know, even in my clinic, I see like a ton of people coming to me for so many different things, right? Um, digestive stuff, like whatever. Um, but the, um, whatever it is that you're dealing with, especially if you've been dealing with it for a long time, it's like, we gotta, we gotta take it a deep layer or a, <laughs> a layer deeper. Um, we've got to go a little more inward and, and see, okay, like what else is contributing to what's kind of going on? Um, and that's kind of how I approach a lot of a lot of my clients because they've seen a lot of other people and just still aren't fully getting the change they need. So, but yeah, that is, I think, where I'm going to leave it today. So thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Um, and um, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. We're getting into spring now, which is so beautiful. So hopefully you guys are having good weather and you're enjoying the weather. If not, hopefully it comes soon for you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I will see you guys in the next podcast episode. So I hope you have a good one. Bye guys.